Hey, and welcome back to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Manny Mar Diege, joining you today live on Thursday, October 10th. We are in officially week six of the NFL, and that means we're going to preview tonight's game, the Thursday night game between the Seattle Seahawks and the San Francisco 49ers. We'll kick off the show by previewing that and talking about the situation surrounding both teams in this game. Also on today's show, we're going to mention how Texans wide receiver Nico Collins has wound up on the IR and the impacts that that is going to have on the Houston Texans. Plus also looking a bit closer at the matchup between the Browns and the Eagles. Not so much on the game, but there are two quarterbacks, two of the guys being mostly criticized mainly this year um, based on their performances. So we're going to get into those guys plus some more down the line as well. Please make sure to stick around for those topics. But before we get started, I'd like to mention to you guys, if you guys want to get involved and you guys have any questions, comments, or opinions you want to share, we always would love to hear what you guys have to say. Your input and insight is a big part of what makes this show great, and we thrive on your energy and insight. So regardless about whether it's anything you have to say on any of the topics or anything just regarding the NFL, don't hesitate to drop it in the chat. And now, if you want to make it absolutely sure that your message stands out and you want to drop it in the chat so I can read it and feature it on the show, there's an easy way to do that now just by using the Super Chat feature. Just click the dollar sign at the bottom of the chat box to send in your Super Chat. This way, it guarantees that your message gets on the air, and it's also a fantastic way to support our channel, and we rely on your support to keep bringing you guys this content, and we always appreciate it whenever you guys are part of the show, but also helping out any which way you can. So go ahead and let us know what you're thinking. Hit the Super Chat button, and let's keep this show as interactive and as exciting as possible. Again, hit the Super Chat button with the new Super Chat feature and get involved with the show. But now, we're going to talk about tonight's game before we move on to any of the other topics I have in store for you guys, because tonight's game is is pretty big already, you know, in week six. You know, we're not too, too early in, but, you know, we're not even halfway yet, and there's already some potential switching of the seedings based on where these teams are in their division just, because we have another huge division game tonight between the Seahawks and the 49ers. The 3-2 and two Seahawks are coming off of back-to-back losses, their most recent one coming on Sunday against the New York Giants at home, 29-20. to And, uh, you know, they're going to host the 49ers, who just gave up another comeback loss to the Arizona Cardinals this time around. First, they did it against the Los Angeles Rams on the road, and now they were home. And still, the Cardinals were able to come back by over 10 points. I want to say it was 14 points or something that the Cardinals overcame, obviously, in the second half. And... Surprise everyone by beating them in that game. So what I meant before about the stipulations, the circumstances that surround this game, you know, it has a lot to do with the seeding. And Seattle currently still have a winning record. They're the only team in this division to have a winning record, actually. So they're still in first place because of that. But if San Francisco and Arizona both win, and obviously the 49ers are beating uh, or are playing the, for, the the 49ers, the Seahawks are playing them tonight, obviously. If they were to beat them and the Cardinals were also get a win, this picture could look a lot different because if, say the, the Seahawks lose tonight, right? They'd have the same record as the 49ers, right, at 3-3, three and three, but still they would be ahead of them because the 49ers currently right now before kickoff stand at 0-2 in the division, and if they were to win, you know, obviously they go to 1-2. But the Seahawks would be only 0-1. This is their first division game of the season. So they would still technically be ahead because they have a better division record for the time being. And they have the same record. So Seattle would still technically hold on to that number one spot even though they, if they were to lose tonight. But then we'd have to fast forward to Sunday where the, the Cardinals travel to Green Bay and they face the, the Packers obviously, right? Let's say they win. Now they'd also be 3-3, three and three. but the biggest difference is they've already played two division games, they blew out the Rams, and they just won a big game last week against the 49ers. So, because they have a undefeated record in the division, and if they were to win, the Seahawks were to lose, and the 49ers were to win tonight, 
They'd all be at 3-3, three and three, but the Cardinals would actually be in first because of that division record. And, um, you know, at the beginning of this year, nobody would have ever thought the Cardinals would have been in that position at all this year. But that's where we stand right now. And it kind of just reminds me, brings me back to, to the point I made, I want to say yesterday or the, the episode before, where there's a lot of just what seems like impossible or shocks everyone when it happens. You know, I was trying to make the point that this season feels like a lot of that stuff that seems surprising is uh is becoming pretty not routine but it's it's not as unlikely as it was in previous seasons at least in my opinion so it makes it exciting and it, it puts a lot more emphasis on these types of games which always makes it better and hopefully we see a better game tonight out of uh, out of these two teams San Francisco at the time I made this were uh, were three and a half point favorites at the moment they've actually moved now to four point favorites that I'm looking at it now so still a pretty reasonable margin of uh, victory there for the 49ers but looking at this contest a little more broadly Seattle leads the overall series 30 to 22 but San Francisco has won the last five games dating back to 2021 but also, for what it's worth, um, Seattle is 24-7 and seven in primetime home games since 2010. So they certainly step up to the plate and more, more often than not deliver when they are in primetime. It is in Seattle, and I know it's a new regime and everything like that, but they've, uh, they've definitely surprised a lot of people already, the Seahawks have. So, you know, that could be something there. And uh, they've already put on a lot of great games. You know, a lot of the... The good games that we've seen so far have involved the Seahawks or have involved the 49ers. So hopefully we're in for another one tonight on Thursday Night Football. And looking now more of these teams at a range of just offense and defense, right? Because I thought it was interesting where these two teams rank in terms of their, you know, overall offense, overall defense, scoring offense and whatnot. I felt like it told the story and it told a way that, you could see either team winning based on the the story so far of the offenses and defenses of this game. Uh, you look at the 49ers first, their overall offense, their second overall in overall offense, their seventh in rushing offense, and their fourth in passing offense as well, while their tenth in uh, in scoring. Where the four, where the the Seahawks also don't fall that far behind. They're seventh in overall offense and they're third in passing offense as well. We've seen that pretty pretty distinctly so far this year with uh, Geno Smith. It's a big reason why he's performing so well because that passing offense is actually legitimately that good. So that was something that I found interesting. Also on the defensive side is really where we get to see um, some potential distinctive points that can lead us to get a feeling of who could uh, who could have an advantage in tonight's game, right? Because we look at the 49ers defense, their 10th overall, their 9th against the rush, their 12th against the pass, and their 13th in scoring defense, while the Seattle Seahawks, they're just right behind them. They are 11th overall, they're 20th against the rush. That's the most, um, that's the biggest difference out of all these categories, and they're 7th against the pass, and 18th in scoring defense as well. So, the biggest difference made in uh, in these categories is the rushing defense, and that that points you to to me. My biggest point about this entire game is how um, you know the the Seahawks try to defend the run, obviously, because they're not playing Christian McCaffrey right. We don't really know when he's going to come back, but Jordan Mason has been at least as good of a replacement as you could have ever thought the 49ers could have had, and we saw. The Seahawks last week, right, give up 129 rushing yards or something to Tyrone Tracy, a rookie running back for the New York Giants the week before that. The lines are good, but they allowed a lot through the ground. David Montgomery had a day. Jameer Gibbs had a day. So this is a a habit now, I would say, for a deficiency for the Seahawks defense that I feel like the 49ers can certainly take advantage of, hopefully more than they did last week, because last week, Talking about, you know, scoring touchdowns and maybe running a couple of them in. The 49ers last week were 1-for-6 in the red zone in terms of touchdowns. And you could at least point to that inefficiency a little bit. The fact that Jake Moody got hurt. But we are talking about touchdowns. So that is something to point out because it wasn't just one game. Because so far through the NFL season, the 49ers ranked 29th 
in touchdowns scored in their red zone drives. They're uh, they're scoring on about 41% of their red zone drives so far, whereas last year they were actually number one and scoring on 67% of their red zone drives. So a pretty distinct fallout there by the 49ers. But still, I think that's the direction to go for this team because you look at the injuries that they have, the, the Seahawks do, in Wusu was placed on the IR. He's one of their defensive linemen. Uh, Byron Murphy, their rookie defensive tackle, is also not playing for the Seahawks. And their edge rusher, Boye Mafe, up until now, um, I haven't seen any of the inactives or it hasn't updated for me yet. So um, he could or could not play. Those are some big pieces missing on that defensive line. And, you know, looking at those matchups, it falls right in line with that because the San Francisco running game going up against the Seattle run defense is going to be a huge matchup to to determine this game. San Francisco's pass catchers going up against an injured secondary for the Seahawks. There's not going to be any of uh, Reek Woolen or potentially Julian Love, two starters for the Seahawks. So that could swing the uh, the momentum in either direction or more so to, to the 49ers, right? And lastly, Seattle's offensive line against the 49ers pass rushers because we saw last week how easily... The, uh, the Giants were able to get pressure on the Seahawks. So monitoring that, and it's hard to get worse than that, but it's something that I'm sure the 49ers have obviously taken notice of and that they're going to send the Nick Bosa's after them and, and whatnot. So how successful they are, or can Seattle bounce back from that? It'll be a huge decider into who wins tonight's matchup. But now we are at the part where I have to predict, and I kind of wanted to go in favor of Seattle, because of the home record and everything like that. And uh, I really do think they're a good team, but I just feel like that run defense really scares me, uh, especially with how successful the Giants were. No shade on the Giants, but uh, that's a lot. Not, that's a lot to give up to any team, but the Giants, you know, the way that they were trending, no Malik Neighbors, no Devin Singletary, and you still gave up 130 yards, that's worrisome for me. That's something that I can't accept if I'm going to pick the Seahawks. So I'm going to go with the 49ers. Um... They have a losing record right now, obviously, but still, I feel like the the comeback losses are are bad, right? They're bad. They're a bad look on their defense, which definitely gives me more cause to pause than it has in recent years. But um, you know, obviously, there's no Christian McCaffrey, and if Jake Moody plays last week or he doesn't get hurt, you probably win that game. And this and this game tonight isn't as big as it is probably, but. Still, because you obviously didn't win, now this one becomes that much more important. And I feel like the 49ers certainly have the talent to uh, to get over the hump and win this matchup. And I'm not so sure the Seahawks are healthy enough to keep up with the 49ers. So I'm going to go with them tonight. It's probably going to be a close game within that four-point margin that the, the betting sites gave. So we're going to go with the 49ers. They'll go even and on four, and tie up the, the series or tie up the, the lead in the division, the division records. And hopefully, if the Cardinals win, it'll make things a lot more interesting. So we're always rooting for that to make it a little bit more competitive and exciting within the division as well. But for right now, we're going to take a break from the show. And when we return, talking about some injuries, we're going to talk about the Texans placing Nico Collins on the injured reserve because of a hamstring injury and how that could affect the Houston Texans negatively, obviously, with all the injuries that they have, but also how it could open up an opportunity for a fellow wide receiver to take advantage of. So we'll be right back with that. You're listening to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast. 